A320 Mentor Channel. The ECAM present normal and abnormal system information to the pilots thanks to the engine warning display EWD and system display SD. Color coding is used on the ECAM screens for clarity and to aid identification of abnormal parameters. The main colors used are white, blue, green, amber and red. During the course you will become familiar with the use of this color coding. Let's start with the last three, green, amber and red, which are the most important. Green color coding is used to indicate a normal condition. Notice that on the engine warning display and the system display shown all indications are normal. Amber color coding is reserved for abnormal indications that require crew awareness but not immediate crew action. Notice on the engine and warning display the amber failure message and on the system display the amber indications. Red color coding is reserved for serious parameter exceedance and warnings that require immediate crew action. Notice the red warning message on the engine warning display. Let's now look at the two ECAM displays in a little more detail. The engine and warning display is divided into two main parts. The upper area is used for the main engine parameters, fuel on board and slat flap position. These indications will be discussed in the appropriate system modules. Under normal conditions, the lower part of the engine and warning display is used to display memos. In the example shown, the memos indicate that the seat belt and no smoking signs are switched on and that the APU is available for use. If failures occur, warning or caution messages are displayed in place of the memos. In the example shown, there is an amber caution message with a series of blue action items. These action items are your electronic checklist to respond to the particular abnormal situation. The system display is used to display particular system information. In the example shown, the cruise page is displayed. This is the page normally seen for the majority of the time that the aircraft is airborne. Useful information from several systems is displayed during flight. The individual indications will be covered in the appropriate system modules. The system display can also be used to display synoptic diagrams of the aircraft systems, system pages. In the example shown, the hydraulic system page has been called. You will see later how these system pages are called either manually or automatically. An aircraft status page may be displayed on the system display to check the state of the aircraft. A normal message is displayed to indicate that the aircraft state is normal and that there are no inoperative systems. Let's see what the status page looks like when things are not normal, for example, following a system failure. The information displayed on the status page will vary depending on the failure. As an example, it can include limitations, approach procedures and deferred procedures, information, and unoperative systems. The area at the bottom of NUSD contains permanent data. Total air temperature, TAT. Static air temperature, SAT. Time. Gross weight. And 
Gross weight center of gravity. Individual airlines can choose which units they wish to use for certain parameters on the ECAM screens. In the examples shown, we have highlighted the areas on the screens where the units used are different. Because these indications are only mentioned in a few areas of the ground school course, we will use boxes to indicate that the units may differ depending on your airline's choice. The boxes mean that the information in this area of the screen is irrelevant to the system being studied. When a system, for example fuel, is being studied, the appropriate unit values will be shown. Under normal conditions, the ECAM system provides the pilots with the information that they need to know for the particular phase of flight, no more, no less. As an example, during the approach, when the landing gear is extended, the ECAM wheel system page is automatically displayed. The ECAM system divides the various stages of a flight into phases, from initial electrical power-up until after engine shutdown. The ECAM system will avoid alerting the pilots unnecessarily during the critical flight phases of takeoff and landing. The warnings and cautions that can be delayed until a less critical phase of flight will be inhibited. We will now look at the different ways that the ECAM system advises you when things are not going exactly right. We will start with a minor advice indication and work up to a major fault, concentrating on the two ECAM screens. If a system parameter, for example an engine vibration level, approaches a limit, the ECAM system will advise you of this by displaying the relevant system page on the system display. The affected parameter will pulse. Notice that at this stage the parameter is still shown in green since it is still within normal limits. This is known as an ECAM advisory. Now let's look at what happens when ECAM detects a minor system failure. When a failure occurs, leading to a loss of redundancy or loss of a system that does not affect the safety of the flight, for example, digital flight data recorder fault, the ECAM system will inform you by displaying an amber caution message on the engine and warning display. At the same time, the two clear keys on the ECAM control panel will illuminate. The first action is to ensure that the aircraft is on a safe flight path. This fault only requires crew awareness, so, if required, the handling of the fault can be delayed. Normally, the pilot non-flying carries out the ECAM procedure, while the pilot flying is responsible for the aircraft flight path. For this exercise, you are the pilot non-flying. Read the title of the failure. In this case, Recorder Digital Flight Data Recorder Fault. In this case, there are no actions required. So, after confirmation from the pilot flying, the caution message can be cleared by pressing one of the clear keys on the ECP. As a result of pressing either clear key, the caution message has been cleared from the engine and warning display and the status page is displayed automatically. In this example, you can see that the inoperative system is the digital flight data recorder.
Cam control panel. The status key comes on along with the two CLR keys. When safe to do so, the status page is reviewed by both pilots. After confirmation from the pilot flying, the status page is removed by pressing either of the status key or one of the CLR keys. We have removed the status page for you. Notice that on the engine warning display, there is a box status caption to tell you that there is information on the status page. On the ECAM control panel, there are no lights. The ECAM actions for the digital flight data recorder fault are complete. We will now look at what happens when the ECAM detects a slightly more serious fault and overheat of the blue hydraulic system reservoir. We will concentrate on the use of the ECAM system, how it alerts you, and how it helps you to deal with the fault. The hydraulic indications themselves will be covered in the appropriate modules. When the fault occurs, the ECAM system alerts the crew orally and visually. You will hear a single chime and see the master caution lights. To cancel the master caution lights and reset the alerting system, one of the master caution push buttons must be pressed. Extinguish the master caution light. The master caution lights are extinguished and the alerting system is reset. The first priority is always to ensure the safe flight path of the aircraft before dealing with the fault. The master caution means that the abnormal situation needs crew awareness, but not immediate action. The indications are a failure message on the engine and warning display, the system's synoptic associated with the fault is automatically displayed on the system display, and the clear keys on the ECAM control panel light up. Let's study the details on the engine and warning display first. The system title is underlined, in this case hydraulics, and the fault is shown alongside, blue reservoir overheat. Notice that abbreviations are used. If you look carefully at the hydraulic system display, you will notice an amber overheat message is displayed. This abnormal indication is how the fault is shown on the system synoptic. The pilot flying will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. In this example, there is a blue action line on the engine and warning display telling you to switch off the blue engine 1 pump. Let's check the overhead panel. On the overhead panel, amber fault lights are illuminated on the hydraulic control panel. The fault lights on the hydraulic panel help you to locate the switches to be operated. We will carry out the action for you.
When the pumps are switched off, the action lines are removed. The blue hydraulic system depressurizes as shown on the hydraulic page by the amber indications. The ECAM system detects the drop in pressure and generates a further alert. There is now a new abnormal message on the engine and warning display, blue system low pressure. The message is boxed to indicate that the loss of the blue hydraulic system is classed as a primary failure that will affect other systems. Depending on the importance of the primary failure, secondary failure messages can be displayed before or after the primary boxed failure message. If the primary failure affects systems without secondary failure message, the affected system title will be shown on the right of engine warning display, as starred. In this example, flight control system page is affected by the primary failure. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, the hydraulic failure message on the engine warning display can be cleared. We will do it for you. We have cleared amber messages. Notice that normal memos have returned on the left side of the engine warning display. The ECAM flight control system page is displayed on the SD, which corresponds to the start item on the engine warning display. On the ECAM flight control page, notice that the controls affected by the loss of blue hydraulics have amber indications. These indications will be discussed in the hydraulic and flight control modules. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, the flight control start item can be cleared. Notice that the secondary failure indication on the engine and warning display is removed. The status page is now displayed, containing several pieces of information. The first area gives procedures to be applied for approach, landing distance factors and other information. You will study the procedures in the appropriate system lessons. In this example, the inoperative systems are Blue Hydraulic the system was switched off during the ECAM procedure. Part Spoilers Some spoilers are inoperative because there is no blue hydraulic pressure. REV1 Reverse 1 inoperative Only for Pratt & Whitney or Rolls-Royce engines. CAT3 Dual Which means that Category 3 Autoland with both autopilots is not available. Alternate braking. The alternate braking is inoperative because there is no blue hydraulic pressure. The status page is reviewed by both pilots. After confirmation from the pilot flying, the status page can be removed. We have removed the status page for you. The ECAM actions for a blue hydraulic reservoir overheat are complete. 
Notice that the status reminder is displayed at the bottom of the engine warning display, reminding you that there is information on the status page. This is important when approach procedures have to be applied. If it contains information, the ECAM system automatically recalls the status page. During the approach phase, when the flaps lever is moved to flap 1 position, or the QNH is set. This is done if there are any items affecting the approach and landing. You can see that in the example shown, there is a landing distance procedure to be applied. You will see how these approach procedures are applied later in the training. The status page is removed, and the cruise page is displayed. So far, we have looked at how the ECAM system advises you of minor failures. We will now look at what happens when there is a serious failure that requires immediate action. To demonstrate this, we will use an engine fire. As before, we will not concentrate on the system failure but on ECAM indications and procedures. Be ready to cancel the warning by pressing a master warning push button. Click on the forward arrow to initiate the failure. When the fault occurs, the ECAM system alerts the crew orally and visually. You hear a continuous, repetitive chime and see the master warning lights flashing. Press one of the master warning push buttons to cancel the master warning lights, stop the chimes, reset the alerting system. On the engine and warning display, the red message, Engine 1 Fire, and the associated procedure are displayed. The red indications on the fire panel and the engine panel provide confirmation and identification of the affected engine. The engine page has automatically been called on the system display and, in this example, the nacelle temperature needle is pulsing. Notice that there is a red land as app message on the engine warning display. This means that the fault detected is serious. The pilot flying should land at the nearest suitable airport. After switching engine 1 off, the after engine 1 shutdown procedure is shown on the engine and warning display. Notice that the amber caution message has appeared below the red warning. This happens because you have to finish the engine fire procedure first before carrying out the actions for engine 1 shutdown. The ECAM system has automatically allocated priority to the warning. As a result of switching off the engine, there are now secondary failures. The next ECAM action is to push the Engine 1 Fire Push button. We will do this for you.
notice that there is a white line in the abnormal procedure. In this example, there is a delay in discharging the agent to let the engine spool down. We have paused the countdown at 10 seconds. When the countdown is complete, a blue action line appears, telling you to discharge the first fire bottle. We will do this for you. The next action line is to notify ATC. Since the ECAM system cannot tell when you are talking, there is no feedback, so this line will not disappear. Notice that we still have a red fire indication, which means that the fire is not extinguished. Another condition line has appeared, and a second countdown automatically starts. This one is 30 seconds long. We have paused the countdown. To continue the countdown, click on the forward arrow. Agent 1 managed to extinguish the fire. The countdown for Agent 2 stopped immediately. Notice that the engine fire procedure on the ECAM disappeared. This means the fire is out. The local warnings on the fire control panel and the engine master panel are no longer on, confirming that the fire is out. Land as app has changed from red to amber, which means that the ECAM has determined that the fault is less critical. The crew should consider the seriousness of the situation and select a suitable airport. The remaining steps are similar to those seen for an ECAM caution, so we will stop here. You have seen that the ECAM system has provided a smart and interactive checklist to help you deal with a major problem. So far, the messages and procedures displayed on the engine and warning display have not been more than seven lines, so we have had room to display them all. Let's look at how ECAM copes with a long procedure. In this example, the indications for an engine fire on the ground, there is an overflow arrow to indicate that there is more information to be seen. For training purposes, we have shown the rest of the procedure below the engine warning display. We will complete the ECAM actions and you will see the associated line of the procedure disappear. As actions are completed, the rest of the information will be displayed and the overflow arrow will be removed.
on the status page, an overflow arrow also indicates that there is further information to be seen on a second page. By pressing a clear key, the next page can be displayed. The second page of status information is displayed. Notice that the list of inoperative systems has not changed, and that there is still an overflow arrow. We have pressed again the clear key. The second page of inoperative systems is displayed. There is still an overflow arrow indicating that there is more to be seen. We have pressed again the clear key. The last page of inoperative systems is displayed, and the overflow arrow is removed. If you want to display the first status page again, the status key can be pressed. We are now back at the first status page again. You will have the opportunity to practice moving between status pages in the simulator, so we will stop here. To complete this module, let's briefly look at ECAM priority. We will only use the bottom part of the engine and warning display for this demonstration. You are partway through the engine 1 fire procedure when ECAM detects another failure. The low priority recorder DFDR fault has appeared below the higher priority engine 1 fire and engine 1 shutdown procedures. Unfortunately, it is one of those days and another failure occurs. The autopilot off warning has appeared above the engine 1 fire procedure. ECAM has automatically assigned priority to the autopilot off message because the first priority is always to fly the aircraft. The low priority recorder DFDR fault is now off the screen. You are advised that the fault is there by the unstarred recorder text in the right hand column of the engine and warning display and the green overflow arrow. We will clear the auto flight autopilot off warning for you. The recorder DFDR fault message is back at the bottom of the engine and warning display and the recorder text has been removed from the right hand column. As an option, an OEB database lists the warnings and cautions relevant to one OEB. This database will be loaded into the FWCs via the MCDU. An OEB reminder function will provide the crew with an operational help by clearly identifying any procedure or status messages which are affected by an OEB. So, the crew will be informed in real time on the ECAM screens if the related procedure or status is applicable or not. Note, the crew has to refer to the QRH where the full OEB information is provided. An OEB reminder flag can be shown only on the ECAM procedure. In this case, the ECAM warning or caution title message is unchanged, but the related actions are replaced by a message, refer to QRH OEB procedure, and the related status page is unchanged. Or,
the OEB reminder flag can be shown on the ECAM procedure and on the status page. In this case, the ECAM warning or caution title message is unchanged, but the related actions are replaced by a message, like previously. The related status page has the additional message, refer to QRHOEB procedure, or The OEB reminder flag can be shown only on the status page. In this case, the ECAM warning or caution title message and the related actions are unchanged. But there is an additional message, as shown. The related status page has the additional message, refer to QRHOEB procedure. In this module, we have discussed the ECAM system. You have seen the various failure levels and how the ECAM system alerts, indicates, and helps you deal with a failure. Throughout the ground school course and during your simulator sessions, you will have the opportunity to practice ECAM procedures. A320, Mentor Channel.